Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, known as Whisper, is a digital radio mode and software developed by Joe Taylor, K1JT. Whisper uses a PC and sound card to encode and decode the signals from a radio transceiver. The mode is usable with very low signal levels and transmitters typically use low power of a few watts or less. It's used in a manned beacon mode where users share signal reports, uploading them to the central website whispernet.org. Activity takes place on specific frequencies on all the amateur bands, but much activity is on the 30 meter band. While a standard single sideband transceiver can be used for whisper, a dedicated transceiver allows using the mode for long periods of time without tying up your station's primary transceiver. Gene Marcus, W3PM, designed a dedicated 1 watt 30 meter whisper transceiver and made the design available on the internet. I decided to replicate it as a project to improve my home brewing skills. In this video I'll demonstrate the homebrew transceiver I built using his design. The design is broken down into six individual modules that can be assembled and tested separately. Gene built his unit in six separate boards using ugly construction and assembled each of them into Altoids tins. This provides both good electrical shielding and minimizes temperature changes caused by drafts or heat from other modules. I elected to build everything on one large circuit board, keeping the modules spaced apart in six by six inch sections so I could later shield them if needed. I also used the ugly construction technique. On my version of the board, the modules are as follows. Local oscillator, notch filter and mixer, receiver AF amp, transmitter AF amp, transmitter, and transmit receive relay. The front panel has a power switch and LEDs to indicate power and transmitting. The rear panel has phono jacks for audio in and out, a cable to the serial port used for transmit and receive switching, phono jack for the antenna connection, and wires for the 12 volt DC power. I followed Gene's design without significant changes. The transceiver is crystal controlled for a single frequency, in this case the popular 10.1387 megahertz whisper frequency on 30 meters. I built each model module individually and tested it before interconnecting all the modules with coax cable. Alignment of both oscillator frequency as well as the crystal notch filter is critical. Gene describes a couple of methods to align the receiver as not everyone has access to a spectrum analyzer. I used a frequency counter, my trusty Heathkit IM2410, a signal generator I built from the DDS2 kit from N3ZI and an oscilloscope. I used an Oak Hills Research WM2 QRP watt meter to adjust the output for one watt of RF power. The finished unit was installed in a metal case to give it a more professional look. I found that I, I did not need to shield the boards to get good stability. The ugly construction style lends itself to good shielding due to the ground plane. I did cover the ventilation holes in the case. I run the transceiver with a laptop running the Whisper software on Ubuntu Linux. I use an antenna tuner into a shortened dipole designed for the 40 meter band. Here you see the setup with the Whisper software running. The transmitter has been heard by stations throughout North America and in Europe, and the receiver has picked up Whisper stations from as far away as Australia and the Pacific from my station in Ottawa, Canada. There were some challenges in building this radio. As is often the case, even with a well-stocked junk box, I had to find suppliers for and order a number of parts, most notably the crystals and an SBL1 mixer. Initially, I attempted to align it using an old and not very stable RF signal generator. I eventually realized I needed a more accurate frequency source and bought and built the DDS2 VFO kit for this purpose. I've since found it useful for some other projects. I also had a wiring error in the notch filter that had me stumped for some time. Once the radio was properly aligned, I was soon picking up whisper stations and seeing my beacon show up by listeners on the WhisperNet site.
If you want to build this transceiver and have some experience with construction, I would highly recommend it. There's a great sense of satisfaction in building a circuit from little more than a schematic and seeing it work on the air. I hope you enjoyed this short video about amateur radio. I plan to do more in the future.